Has, has, has anybody got any other questions for James? Um, going off the thing that you said about the spinning plates, so we've all the different like facet, like yeah. it's like a multifaceted approach trying to do all these things at once. How do you kind of organise that? Do you like periodise it, like block periodisation? Are you trying to do it concurrent, like all at the same time? What do you kind of do? Um, we have we have an emphasis, um, and I haven't got the, the complete model here, but we'll go through. Um, Pretty much was then developing, as I said, if we go back to what I said we're trying to do, we want them to be strong. We do want them, to, we need them to be strong, and that takes time. So you've got to consistently apply a resistance training stimulus in order to get that force production up. So strength is pretty much constant in the early years, and then what we tend to do is. Um, might be easier if I draw it out rather than try to explain it. So we use, we tend to not try and focus on more than um, a couple of areas at, at, at one point, but, and this is, I'll, I'll take you through it when we get down and, and get practice, in the practical. So we'd have a few, we look at a session in, in blocks really, in terms of what we do, and then we'd alternate what goes on in a block we might give, um, so over the, if I take it back to the beginning of the year, we had our, our movement preparation, which incorporated a lot of work, sort of your mobility, um, muscle activation, um, some basic movement <coughs> drills, so it might be like lateral shuffles, things where they're moving and getting warm, <coughs> so using some fundamental movements to get warm, so we've got a bit of FMS in there, we've we then go from the movement prep, we're into um, a bit of jump training. So early on with a landed emphasis, jump and land. Can you land well on two legs? Can you land well as a leap from right to left? Can you land well as a hop? Um, so a bit of jumping. So we've got our power based bit of training in there. We're into a strength block. Maybe with a bit of core on the end, you might have some flexibility. So that might be, that would be how one, I've got some examples on my website as well that, that, that kind of give you a, break, a more detailed breakdown of, of what we include. So that might be phase one, but those blocks may then change. So in the next half term, we tend to periodise by half term because it's quite convenient. It's about six weeks, to eight weeks. It might have a couple of blocks. If it's an eight week one, we might have two four week blocks in that. Um, we also have to work around what facilities we have at a given time. So in the early part of the year, in September, we can get out and we can run. The weather's good, it's warm. So we do a bit more outdoor work, a bit longer distance work. We hit the winter, space shuts down, fields are out of use. We're in the gym, we do our strength work, but we've got sports all on the side of the gym, so we do some speed and agility over shorter distances. So the next block might look like that, speed, strength, might be a bit of flexibility. If they need it, it might be CV. If they've shown up in a, in a maximum aerobic speed test that they're pretty poor, we might use that after the session. And we try and plan it so anything that we want at high speed or high power comes first, then the strength, and then anything aerobic or that's really fatiguing for the system, we want it in a way that doesn't negatively impact upon the other aspects of the training. Uh, and the warm-ups are a huge tool for you to kind of use and, and keep some of those smaller plates spinning. So you know you might progress into some reactive jump work, some, some pogo based work to keep those, those levels up or to start to look at or exposing an athlete to that kind of training stimulus so that you don't all of a sudden hit them at some point. Because it might eventually turn around that like the girls now, who I was saying are very, very strong, we're just rewriting their programmes and theirs actually looks now, we've got a little bit of strength. Use it applying uh, something called the minimal dose. A guy called Barry Spearings, then uh, what well, he presented at the UKSCA conference. So they might just do a single set of five five reps, which, going by his research or the research he presented, is sufficient 
to maintain strength for a period of 16 weeks. If you keep the, the load the same on a single set, we can maintain it. So we use the strength at the top, but because we want to develop power, we're now into some more ballistic work. Jumps, barbell jumps, uh, push presses, heavy pulls, looking at that rate of force development. So that, that middle block becomes different, but we're still maintaining high force output. Um, and then whatever we decide to use <coughs> the bottom bit for, I haven't got that far in the programs yet, but it might be some more sort of rotary power work throwing, med balls, that sort of thing, so it all kind of fits together. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that's cool. That's actually a great answer for a question on periodization. So a lot of people think that you, you should be even doing block periodization, linear periodization, conjugate, concurrent, reverse, any of those different types of things. But what James has just showed is really the only things that you need to focus on are things like concentration, variation, what's the goal you're trying to look at that period of time and concentrate on that and then move on to the next thing. So don't worry too much about all these fancy names ahead of periodization. It's just focusing what your adaptation is you want from that, from that week or that month and how best to train for that. And then vary that over an extended period of time. So variation and concentration are two main things. So that's, that's a fantastic answer for, for a periodization question for sure.